Hello friends, in this video we are going to be looking at how we can effectively use our Misa Brush tool for frequency separation in Adobe Photoshop. This is Twisted Creative, Alari B. Manu is my name. If it's your first time on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. Without wasting much time, let's get into it. So this is the model we are going to be using, as you can see, a very beautiful model. So all we need from this face now is for us to make it smooth and also have details on it. So the first thing we are going to be checking when using Misa brush for frequency separation is the brush settings. If you click on the brush icon, then you navigate to the bottom. This is where Misa brush is. Then you select Misa brush. This is the Misa brush. Before you start using Misa brush for frequency separation, you have to make sure these things are done. One. So you have to click on this little arrow here and choose clean brush. So as you can see, two of these buses are selected. That is why they are tick black. So if you click this once, that means you disable that. You must disable that. You make sure this brush is selected. Make sure it is tick black like this because if you click it like two times, it's not going to work. It's not going to work perfectly. It's not going to give you what you want. So you have to select this and make sure this very one is on tick black. Then after which we have to go to the settings. This is where many people make mistakes. If you are trying to make your settings, just try and make this words be between 10 and 30. For me, I want this thing to be very fast. So I want it to be on 30. But you can use 15, you can use 10, depending on what's working for you, if you have been doing it. But for now, I'm going to be using 30 for the words. I'm still going to use 30 for the load. I'm still going to be using 30 for the miss. So I'm just a kind of trying to simplify this so as it can work for everybody. So I'm going to use wet at 30, load at 30, then miss at 30. The flow has to be determined by you. It's going to be depending on how many times you are going to click in for this work to be done. If you place it on 10 like this, you have to click several times before your work has to be done on that particular position. But if you place it on 30, for instance, it's going to be appearing as you click, as you click. But if you place it on 100, it's going to just happen once. It will happen once. Let's just try by 100 and put it by 100 and see what's going to happen. You see what happened to this image now. That is how it's going to happen. But if you place it at maybe 20 or let's say 20, you have to click, 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 click and click before it's going to happen. So let's go back. Let's undo this. And the last one, for this percentage here, I always make it zero. I don't add any figure there. What we are going to be looking at now is 30, wet 30, load 30, mix 30, and flow can also be 30, depending on how you'll be able to manage it. You can use 10, you can use 20 for flow, you can use, but 30, 30, 30, 30 is okay. Then the last one should be zero. After much explanation, we have to go fully into the frequency separation. We are not using action here. We are going to do it our normal way. So we are going to be using our Ctrl J twice to create two more copies. We are going to name this first one to be, let's say, color, like we used to. The second one to be texture. We have to disable the texture layer and, and select the color layer, then go to filter, Go to Blur, then Gaussian Blur. We have to adjust this radius from this 0 0.1 to a point whereby we will no longer see the details of this image that much. So let's take it to 3.5, 4.5. What we all need to know is that this radius, this radius is not supposed to be a particular figure, depending on how large or how small your image will be so you are going to adjust this thing manually to make sure we are not seeing the details that much at least it should be okay by nine then let me hit okay for this so if you take a look at this now we've lost the detail on this image and the top one is going to be the texture which is going to bring back the detail we are trying to separate the color from the textures so we can work on them individually we have to select this texture now and enable the texture layer then we'll go to image then apply image 
we are going to apply the colors to the texture. For the layer now, we are going to click on this layer to change it to color because we are already we are already on texture. Texture is already selected. So what we are applying now is the color. So we have to choose color for this. Channel should be RGB. The blending subtracts. So this is how your image is supposed to look like. Then make sure your scale is by two and your offset should be 128. Then make sure you don't check any of these balls, neither to invert because we are working on 8-bit image. Then we we'll have to click OK for this. Then we'll go to blend mode and change it to linear lights. I have to select this texture, hold my control to select the color, then use Ctrl G to place them in a group. So if I put off this layer now, you notice that nothing really happened to the image. Nothing happened to the image. Let's open the group. Now we have to brush directly on the color layer. Let's click on this color layer. We have to select the color layer. Our Mesa brush is set already. So the next thing we are going to be looking into now is the direction of brushing. The direction of brushing has a very good role or a very bad role to play on frequency separation. So we have to make sure we are brushing in the right direction. I've made the drawing of these lines, so I have to bring in the drawing. So let's take it to this other side and drop it here. I can just position it the way I... Okay, I can use my move direction key to reposition it. So I think it should be okay like this. If you take a look at this direction now, you notice that there is always a direction for every stroke. So let's take this diagram to the top. So we have the diagram outside the group. So we can enable it and disable it. So let's work. Let's try and see if we can work with the stuff on like this. We we'll have to select the color layer and pick our Mesa brush tool and start painting. So like this now, we are going to be painting to this direction from this angle. Another thing we need to know apart from the brushing direction is how we can distinguish between mid-tone shadows and highlights because you have to brush them separately. In between the mid-tone and highlights, you have a transition, so you have to brush them separately. Let me explain. So this is the image. Let's assume that this is the mid-tone here and this is the highlight. So in between both of these, in between the in between the highlights and the okay, let's put this off first. So this is the mid-tone and this is the highlight. This is the mid-tone and this is the highlight. So if we are to brush the highlight, we have to brush just the highlights then after brushing the highlights we are going to brush the mid-tone don't forget the direction then in between them is the transition you can reduce your brush and match the transition between both of them so that is it. You have to match them. If you don't do it that way, that means you are going to mess up your, your job. So we are going to be painting like this. Let's open the direction again and make sure our color layer is selected. Then we can keep on painting. Because don't want to spend much too much time. So let's be on the highlights. And this is a transition between the highlights and the shadows. So you can take this area down it's considered to be a shadow area let's zoom out then increase our brush a bit then paint like this we have to be on the shadow area then we have to come like this for this rounded area then we have to come like this here to come like this then this area like this then as you can see for the direction we can take it this way then for here we can go this way okay let's see what we've done let's see what we've done and see if we are doing it right we have to disable this first and hold our alt and this is before this is after this is before this is after as you can see a nice job is being done there so we have to enable this again if you need the direction then we have to make sure the color layer is also selected then we can zoom in or out then go to into this place and do the shadows here then we can do the mid tone here 
then we'll go in this side to do the shadow don't draw too long so you can go under here and do something like this then this area should be coming like this then this area like this then you come to this area and do it this way take it this way then here to come like this then bring this side back you can mix up here here can go to any direction so can bring here down then inside here you can reduce the brush size make sure you reduce your brush size and increase it when necessary because if you don't you are going to mess it up so let's go let's go in here and take it to this direction then when it comes to here you can reduce your brush size and bring it straight then bring here straight then turn to this direction then you can increase your brush a little you can go this way or this way for this then you can go this direction or this direction for this area so for this you can go either direction then here you can also do the same thing but make sure if you are on highlights you have to be on highlight then if you are doing transition you have to be on transition so let's go to the no stop let's bring it down have the transition in between the highlights here then for the forehead you can bring here kind of Then for the forehead, you can go to this direction from up to down. From up to down. Then for this area, you have to go like this. Then for here, you have to go from up to down. Then here, you have to curve a little. Then assume the hair is not here, it would have gone like this, like this. So let's do it this way. So let's see what we've done so far and see how good or how bad it is. And there's one other thing we need to know is that if you check all layers, this is how it's going to be looking. So let's undo it. You have to make sure sample all layer is not checked. So let's disable this direction and see the before and after. Hold on my alt and click on this. This is before, this is after, this is before, this is after isn't that amazing there are other ways you can work on this you can also disable this texture layer and go in here and see the area that you've not done well let's assume that this area this transition between this highlight and mid-tone is not well blended you can blend it like this then blend here so you can go ahead and check anywhere that is not well arranged and can do it here so this is the transition for the forehead increase the brush size a little and paints So as you can see, the, the shape of the face is maintained because of the direction. Let's see here.
with this misa brush and this color layer you can smooth hell out of the image it doesn't really matter you can smooth hell out of the colors but don't miss up the highlights shadows and mid tone so that you're not going to ruin your job so let's go by smoothing So we are going to enable the we are going to enable the texture layer and see what it's going to give us. So this is the image. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's just check the before and after. Let's hold our alt down and click on this to see the before and see the after. This is the before, this is the after. Let's take it closer. Let's make it closer. So Hold our alt again and this is before and this is after. This is before, this is after. It's a slight difference but... So the difference is not that much because you have the details on the image. So if you zoom in like this, you notice that the image is a kind of looking professional. This is before, this is after, this is before, this is after. So friends, that is a very simple way you can set your missile brush to get the best out of frequency separation in Adobe Photoshop. So if you find it interesting, helpful and useful, please make sure to hit that like button. Like I said earlier, if you are new on this channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not just hitting that subscribe button, also ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any of the next video. And if there is anything you find out about this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching today's video. Creative people keep on creating. Please stay creative. Continue creating. See you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.